Hey everybody, Nina of She Knows SEO here, and today we're going to talk about the thing that is making startup owners cry on Twitter. Like, properly, I, I think some marriages might end over this. So ChatGPT introduced the Create a GPT feature just a couple days ago. And as of now, they say that like every plus user has access. I cannot guarantee that, um, but I'm just going to go off of what they say. So what the heck is this and why are startup owners crying over it and how can you use it? Um, well, basically you're able to create your own chat GPT wrappers and the wrap, we're not talking like Nicki Minaj or something, which is the only wrapper I could think of there. That was, I panicked as I said that. Um, <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's actually just the extra training that someone would give to an AI to be able to then make it do what they want. So if you think of ProBlogger, it's a really cool um, AI that does like YouTube descriptions and social media captions and stuff. For each individual one, when you just like type in like, okay, YouTube video about creating a GPT, it knows what the right style of output is because of its training. So essentially it's the training someone gives this AI to perform the task they want. Well, a ton of startups were creating things like that. Like that was their thing. That's what a ton of different like custom AI writers are basically. It's just a bit of extra code and chat GPT. So <laughs> because chat GPT has given us all the ability to do this now, um, things are not going well for some of those startup owners, which is unfortunate for them, but kind of cool for us because now we get to basically be startup runners, which is really cool. So how can you actually create your own? I've created a couple here that you can see. Um, I created a few more that I just made for fun and deleted because they were nonsense, but um, it is really fun to make these. And I want to empower y'all to do your own. So how do you get started? You're gonna come to ChatGPT. You do need a GPT-4 account. This is only available to people using GPT-4. On the side, you're gonna hit the explore button and then you're gonna come to the My GPTs. And you'll know if you have access to it because this will be clickable. If it's grayed out, you don't have access yet. So if you click on this, you're gonna go into the GPT builder area. And this is where you're actually able to custom build this GPT for yourself. So the first thing it always asks is what do you wanna make? It wants to know what is this thing? And so you can actually just chat with the chat GPT builder thing to create your, your builder. Blah, blah. to create your GPT, <laughs> sorry. My dog really sighed very intensely there and distracted me for a second. So you have the option to just kind of chat with it and build what you want, and that's pretty good. I do not think it is the best version of this, but if you're just making something fun for yourself, that's fine, like you do not need to do more than this. However, it is limiting. So for example, if I say uh, create a golden retriever name generator, um, name it, Theo's names. It's going to run whatever you say, and it's going to then do this updating GPT. And that's where it's actually going to update what you see in the preview window. And so this is where you're going to be able to see a live version of whatever you've made. So whatever is over here in the preview area is what's actually happening on the front end. It does generate a profile image, and that is because this GPT is eventually going to potentially be available in a GPT store. This is going to be kind of like the app store where people can even sell their custom GPTs. However, you can also set for that not to be the case if you don't want to. So I think if it's going to be something that you're selling, you'll be more careful about what the logo is. I don't care right now, so this is fine. But this has given me a starting point. Now you can start conversing with it and saying things like, okay, the names can only be male names. They can only start with M, whatever instructions you want to give it. It's going to build those into its kind of coding, but no coding is required. Or this is the better way to do it, to be honest, is going into the configure area. And this is where you can actually customize everything yourself. So you can give your GPT a name here. You can upload a photo for the image if you want. You can even customize it with Dolly 3. You can change the description that's seen here, but the really important part is the instructions. Now you get 8,000, 8,000, thousand characters that you can write here. And I really do recommend using them to their fullest extent, especially if you're doing some really custom coding and custom creation. And I say coding where I just mean like data set analysis or really fancy instructions. 
Um, but eventually people are going to all be able to make a name generator with this. I mean, even now, technically they all could. Um, so you kind of want to stand out, especially if you're going to be creating something that you want to launch in this GPT store at one point, you want to give as much context as you can here. And so you can see it's done a basic job of filling out whatever it could based on that first area. It never really gets very long though. I think I've gotten like it as long as like six lines total, um, which isn't very long if you have 8,000 characters to work with. So there's a lot of like extra customizations that you can do here um, where you can just give it certain instructions. For example, if you were creating like a GPT that is like the Nina GPT, it's supposed to like have all my knowledge, then I would want it to like actually focus on my database or my um, data sets first and the knowledge I've given it and answer using that first. If you want something that's up to date on current information from your website, you would want to say check for up to date information on she knows seo.co. Any kind of instruction like that can be built in here. You can build in tone of voice, style, the type of answers, um, the format the answer should be provided in. You can build in if it's a sassy bitch kind of <laughs> GPT if you want. That is totally possible, but you're going to need to build that in here. And the way that you build it is you just tell it to do the thing. You do not need to get like super fancy or try to like use special language. You don't have to. You can literally just say, write a blog post that has three paragraphs. The first paragraph is the intro. The intro should be three sentences. Do remember that GPT is not great at counting, but it does its best. Um, but that's going to give you some approximation of what you want. So that's how you can really customize this to the best of your ability. There are so many cool people on YouTube and on Twitter listing out some of the custom instructions that they're using. And I'll show you how I found some cool ones um, in a minute. Then you're going to get the conversation starters that are like the four or five things down here um, that someone could click to give them an idea of what they could ask. I don't, I've never used them. I think they're kind of dumb. So I just delete them. I don't think they're super helpful, but you can fill this in yourself here. Then you have the capabilities. So do you want it to be able to access the web? If you were building like kind of an Oregon trail style, like game for your kids, maybe you don't want it to access the web and accidentally download like a photo of someone who, I don't know, has diphtheria or something. Is that an Oregon trail thing? Like you might not want that. So you might want to turn this off. Same for image generation. If you don't want it to accidentally generate images, just click it off. Um, it can also do the code interpreter. So just all of the capabilities of GPT, basically, you can say whether or not your GPT is going to have those. Then we have knowledge. And so that's where we're going to actually feed it some information. Anything in the create area that you attach will show up here in this upload files area. And you can upload a variety of files. So you can have PDFs. I find those glitch the most though. You can have Word documents, TXT files. Um, you can have images, all sorts. Uh, the only thing I haven't tried so far is video. So I don't know if it could actually do that. To my knowledge, it can't because normal chat GPT can't really handle videos. And with those files, you get up to 100,000 words when it is a Word document or TXT file from my tests. So you get a lot that you can cram in there. However, you only get 10 files that it'll let you upload. So let's say you have, um, I don't know, you want to train it on your YouTube channel. Get all the transcripts and try to consolidate them into 10 documents as best you can for it to run off of. So you just have to kind of be a bit careful about not having too much information spread out. Like we can't have small files. We got to have one bulky file here. I will give you a word of warning though. Anyone can access what you have in the knowledge files area. Um, so if someone is using your GPT, oh, so pardon me, not anyone, anyone using your GPT, they can actually download that information. So do be careful that you're not putting like private data about yourself in there or um, any proprietary information that would not be safe if it got out. Um, you can definitely train it on information and there's tons of data sets online that you can train it on. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't know, like give it your banking history and have it generate tax uh, like information based on that because then your users could see your banking history if they really want to. They just need the right prompt. So be careful. <laughs> But this is where you can give it lots of context. So yeah, you can train it on your YouTube videos uh, from the transcript. You can train, train it on your blog posts. You could train it on um, course material that you have. You could train it on certain image styles. Like if you want to create uh, a generator that generates images in your style or 
always does a picture of a girl with purple hair or something because that's you then there you go that's going to give you uh, the way that you can customize this so it is as personal as possible and it's your own gpt then even if you want other people to use it now really cool are the extra actions and so this is going to be um, a little bit more relevant down the line especially once this is something that people can connect uh, or can put in like the gpt store but essentially this is going to allow people to connect to things like Zapier and create kind of their own custom app or plugin where you're gonna be able through the authentication to actually connect it with an API of any sort. So if you hit edit, you're gonna be able to do an API key and I have not experimented enough with this yet. Zapier has hated me recently, so I've just kind of left it alone. <laughs> so once it starts maybe being nicer or make.com, I don't know, calls my name a bit more, then I will experiment with this a bit more. But this is where you can add a lot more context. And if you're going to be putting this public facing, um, I would even say if you're releasing the URL to other people, definitely make sure you have a privacy policy about how you're collecting data, what data is collected, if any, which really should be none, and how the data is being used. Again, the answer should be you're not using it. It's just in here um, to generate your answers, then it goes away sort of a thing. So I would really recommend having that to cover your butt because uh, especially if you have something like I found one on Twitter that was like a list of like if you gave it like what's this drug? Like what's Ciprolex? I don't know. That's my anxiety medication. It would then give you a bunch of information on that. Well, there's some liability issues there if you're giving information about a drug, especially if it accidentally starts um, recommending things and we don't want that. So be really careful. So that's how you're going to create this. Um, then to share it, you're going to hit save. And when you hit save, you're going to select either only me. So only you'll be able to see it only people with the link and then you can share the link. So for example, if you trained it to write in your style and know your site and everything, you could just share it with your writing team and then be able to have all of them write in a similar way, um, same tone, have the same data set and the same baseline, which I think is super helpful or public, which is then it will appear in the GPT store when that's live. If it meets certain qualifications, I'm sure just like the app store, there's going to be some like things you have to pass, for example, like, I mean, I know that they already kind of limit the AI to not do um, rated R sort of situations, but they're probably going to want to double check that and make sure that there's nothing like defamatory or um, that would put them into a liability issue. So yeah, then you would just hit confirm. I haven't given it a proper name over here yet, but let's just put text and then we'd be able to save it. So we would confirm. Then it's going to pull me back to my general area. And if I went to explore, oops, explore you're gonna be able to see it up in your GPTs. Now, quick tip, if you're using someone else's GPT, it will go away if you have not used it recently. So I tried like 40 and luckily I already kind of assumed this would happen. So I was saving them in um, a notes app with links. Don't worry, I'm gonna do a massive roundup for y'all on all the cool ones I find, um, but they're no longer in my recently used. It only shows the last three that I used. So what you do is when you have it in your sidebar, you're going to hover over the three dots and hit keep in sidebar. If this is something that you want to refer back to a lot, or you're going to need to bookmark it. I hate bookmarking things. So I think this is a good option for now. Once it's in the app store thingy, I think it'll be a lot easier, but this is how we have it for now. Okay. So now to figure out, um, how, like what kind of knowledge base and custom instructions to use. I literally just came into one of the ones that like one of the GPTs already built into OpenAI, and I said, what is included in your knowledge base? And so it can then actually tell you what it was trained on. And this is super important because you'll be able to learn um, those systems and the methods other people are using, especially once this is more public facing and you see more other people's stuff, you can see, okay, what like information was it given you can also say what are your custom instructions and so i went through a bunch of them just to try and figure out okay what is your knowledge base how were you created um what can you do for me essentially uh, in terms of like teaching me the kind of things that i could tell my gpt so here we can see like what is the primary role of it uh, clear do's and don'ts. So that is how it's structured to provide the output. You have tone, you have tailored suggestions. I highly recommend going through uh, the GPTs to figure this out for yourself and find other options of um, 
different kinds of custom instructions and knowledge bases that you could run for your own purposes. Really, the options are endless here. Um, you definitely want to test it before you release it to anybody. And again, do make sure that there is no like specific data included um, that would be an issue if someone else could see it. Um, because people can see it. There is no like, it doesn't lock away the custom instructions as you can see, like I can clearly see exactly what it was trained on. So be very careful if you're creating something super fancy that you intend to launch. Um, I would use some fake data if I were you. But yeah, this is how you can build a GPT for yourself that you can then release if you want to. I definitely recommend it for course creators to create um, special GPTs either on their own material, maybe even like as quizzes. You can literally tell it to like only return um, images, only return interactive material where it's like quizzes and things like that. You can tell it to, yeah, just be sassy and give you sassy responses. You can tell it to literally do anything. It's really, really fun. So the limit is only what you can imagine and basically till you get bored or you need to go to bed at a certain point. I hope you've had lots of fun with me um, going through how to create your own GPT. If you're interested in more things like this, I love teaching AI and SEO on my channel. So give me a follow and check out some of my other ChatGPT videos. Um, I have a really cool video coming soon comparing ChatGPT to Jasper and showing you how you can write a blog post with each of them using some custom instructions that I really enjoy using. Um, I love prompts. They are one of my favorite things. And if y'all want to get all of my prompts, all over 350 of them now, uh, you can join the ChatGPT Blogging Blueprint, which is my ChatGPT course um, for $197 that has all of my knowledge on uh, writing with ChatGPT. So you're going to learn how to prompt ChatGPT, how to write posts, research posts, edit, reformat, everything with posts. Plus, you're going to get my massive prompt library where no two prompts are the same or do the same thing that will help you with building backlinks, writing posts, repurposing to social media, and so much more. Basically, anything a prompt could do, it's in there for sure. <laughs> so I highly recommend checking that out. I will link that in the description. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you create. If you create a custom GPT that you don't mind sharing, please pop it in the description or tag me on Twitter at Nina Clapperton. I am working on a massive roundup that I want to share with my audience on YouTube, on my website, and to my email list. So you can get yourself in front of a ton of people if you are willing to share that with me. Um, and I will, of course, shout out each individual creator and offer a link to whatever, I don't know, social media profile or site that you have um, where they can find out more about you. Uh, but you would also need to offer them the ability to go and check out the GPT because the whole point is that everyone should get to try them all. I have found so much cool stuff already and I cannot wait to see what else people create and what interesting things everyone's able to make now that we don't have to have a coding background to be able to create this stuff. So if you have a lovely rest of your day and I've probably, if you're as kind of cool as I am, I guess, um, probably ruined your Friday night because you're just going to spend it doing this now. Uh, but it's really, really fun. I highly recommend checking these out. Um, actually, I don't even know when I'm releasing this, so it might not still be Friday. <laughs> but I hope you have lots of fun playing around with this um, and that you create some cool and actually helpful stuff too. I've already been able to start coding some GPTs that can write for each of my sites um, and train my writers even on my style. So I think that's super epic and I've created an alt text generator and all sorts of other fun ones that just uh, aren't done yet because I keep getting distracted. Uh, the ADHD is ADHDing. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day and I will see y'all soon. Bye.